first time for me. This is going to be a kingdom, a kingdom discussion video. Now, I've caught up with most of the content that I've covered live reaction wise at large. And because I have, I have now a little more time to do more content that I want to do. And this is something that I definitely want to do when it comes to kingdom discussions and spread the good word of kingdom and shin of the high shin unit. Now, let me spend a few minutes talking about what I posted on Twitter a few days ago. A few days ago, I posted on Twitter. And this may be controversial, but I'm pretty sure I expected that, honestly. No, no, no I did. To me, as of this latest arc, as of chapter 640 of Kingdom, to me, the Zhao invasion arc is the best arc in Kingdom. Therefore, by default, one of the best arcs in manga that I've ever read. So what I did was that I did an entire reread of the Zhao invasion arc. And this is a long reread, man. Like, it was a long, like, I underestimated the reread because I forgot. This arc is three years deep. Three years deep. It started in chapter 498, something around there. And it ends in the latest chapter, I think, either, four, either 640 or 641. Or for maybe 42, like I'm not too sure. I haven't read the latest chapter of Kingdom yet. I'm gonna do that in the next few days. But I figure, because I'm assuming that it's already over this arc. If not, then I guess the next chapter could be. But I think that's good. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be like the ceremony, I'm guessing. Because all that stuff now is just to be general, essentially. All that's left now is to finally. The fruit is ripened. It's time to pluck it and time to be generals. And that is a long, long, long time coming, my God. But I reread the entire arc. And when you reread arcs, which I tend to do for One Piece, and now I'm doing for Kingdom, this arc is tremendous. It is such a good arc. Does it have problems? Yes, it has problems, of course. No arc is perfect. Even though I love the Coalition arc, I love that arc. Even there, you can say there are a few flaws here or there. Fair enough, like you can, obviously. However, the Zalvision arc is, wow. Three years, and I would say it has not only some of the best character moments, for characters that matter a lot to us as readers. So, of course, not just Shin, but also Kyokai. Kyokai is not in the Coalition arc at all. She has her own mini arc, or I guess her own arc with the Shiyu stuff, which is actually a pretty good arc. But Kyokai is in this arc, and she is tremendous. Ten, it's also pretty damn good in this arc too. Moten, Ohon, looking very studly, looking very studly. Yotanwa, first time seeing her on the planes, very good stuff. Without question, very good stuff. And then Osin and Riboku mind games. We're seeing Riboku do him actually growing from his experience with the Duke, implementing instinctual tactics among his troops. Then Osin reading that like a book. And then making a zone for Osa and Reboku to have a conversation. Like, tremendous. Tremendous. But at the same time, again, I do want to acknowledge, and I just on the tweet, that this is just based on the reread of the Zhao Invasion arc. I have not reread the Coalition arc. I will at some point, for damn sure. Absolutely. Hopefully sometime later this month, I will, yeah, I will reread the Coalition arc. And I'll get a better sense of whether or not this arc, the Zhao Invasion arc, is better than the Coalition arc. Now, to be fair, Zhao and Coalition, I think, are the are some of the best arcs I've read in manga, period. Like, just flat out, period. But which one's superior, that's where things kind of differ. Because the Coalition is phenomenal. The Coalition is very, very good. I mean, just the setting and the tension is off the charts. You have these high impact moments, like the death of Dukio. That that was high impact. That was tragic, but it was so so epic. 
Then you have Mongoku and Shin, which was very, very good. Then, of course, you have Mobu and Kanme. Mobu and Kanme is, is a fight to behold. Right now in the anime, and mind you, we're on hiatus for the Kingdom anime because of the virus, unfortunately. But right now in the anime, it's the Coalition arc. And so far, it's pretty solid. It is pretty solid. And I would like to hope that Mobu and Kame is going to be something phenomenal in the anime. If it's not, then it won't be bad, probably. Like, I, I doubt that. But it could be better, clearly. Because Mobu and Kame is one of those fights where if it's animated to like the best the studio can do, then it could bring in a lot more folks to watching Kingdom... And then hopefully from there, reading Kingdom. If you have a phenomenal anime, it tends to branch off into manga sales. It is what it is. And mind you, I mean for like Japan. Because unfortunately in the West, there is no, as far as I understand, as far as I know, I haven't seen them. There is no official English translation of Kingdom. I'm pretty sure. Because I've searched for them and I haven't seen them. So I'm pretty sure that they don't exist, which is truly unfortunate. Even though Kingdom is very popular... In Japan, we see in the manga sales, and on top of that, it had a live action movie, which I haven't seen yet. I'm trying to find it, I haven't seen it yet, but apparently, it's really damn good. So, the whole point here is that if Mobile and Kame can be like U foldable level of great, just how U foldable brung, I mean, granted, it probably, it probably like won't be anywhere near this close, but just how U foldable brung Kimishu no Yaiba to like the forefront because the animation was so crazy. And when it came to like certain moments, like Tanjiro versus Rui, or Tanjiro and Nezuko versus Rui, it's like, dude, whoa. If Mobile and Kame can be of that quality, or maybe like, let's say, a One Punch Man level, where it's still really, really phenomenal, like something just utterly studly, and then you'll see like highlights, highlights of this on YouTube, and it'll probably like, yo, like this fight's actually kind of like insane, like, wait, wait, what's the series? Mm. Mobile and Kame has that kind of potential. And then you have Oshin and Ordo, and then Ordo getting spooked, like mega spooked, and 5,000 Mountain Dew just gone like that. Like, yo, he knows the mountains better than I do. And then he does make a single move, which allows Oshin to basically save the day with the Konkoku Pass stuff, where Khan actually got our troops by anyway. And then from there, you had uh, Konki and that other uh, Quinn General, I've, I've got his name, and how like, they go on like, crazy flank missions against the Han General and then go home. Like, it, re it really is great stuff through and through the Kojin arc. It really is. And then towards the end, we have like, the mega flank of Riboku. And then you have Hoken and Duke, which was amazing. And then you have Sei and Sai. That was tremendous through and through. Then you have the Mountain Tribes come in there. And then you have Hogan. It's like, Hogan, oh, 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 and then Shin just teleports. He was inside, and all of a sudden, it's like right there. It's like, wait, dude, what? Shin, what are you doing? Crazy. Love it, love it, love it. But, but, all that being said, the Coalition arc, I think, is fantastic. I think it's, again, one of the best arcs in manga. But the Zalmage arc, I think, is actually a step, a step. Like a hair ahead of it. Because even though... And no arc is perfect, of course. Even though I do have my gripes with the Zavage arc in some regards. Like, of course, the spiritual component of it. Where Kyokai brings back Shin from the dead. It's like, dude, what? Like, like that... For me, is I'm not feeling at all. But I understand fully that from like the very beginning of the series, you can argue... There's always been a spiritual component to Kingdom. That has always been there. And back in the day, of course, you can argue that, you know, back during ancient China, they were more spiritually endowed than we are today, obviously, especially as, like, Americans. <laughs> but the fact remains is that, yes, this arc has problems. The positive elements of this arc, I think, overwhelm, overwhelm the negative aspects of this arc by leaps and bounds. To the point where they don't even really matter, per se. And again, I think it's only something you really understand when you reread it. When you read week from week to week, it's like, it's not as... There are certain aspects that you, that you can't fully grasp. And then number two, is that because you're reading it all in one go, 
you start to like recall things, especially for a three year arc. You start to recall things that happened in the past and then how these things tie in later on. So one of the things that kind of that I kind of forgot about when I was reading Kingdom, of course, obviously, because it's been three years, was that Shin just got Oki's glaive at the very beginning of the arc. I thought it was in the last arc. No, no, no. It was actually at the very beginning of this arc. Even Osin's comments to uh, Shohei-kun were at the very beginning of this arc and how they tie in much, much, much later on towards the end of the arc, three years deep. That, that's impressive, honestly. And then, oh, how you have Shin at first struggle with the glaive, where he's doing like these gigantic swings and he's come through like five, six, seven dudes at once, but he's slow. And he's getting tagged. And it's not as impressive as you first think. And then over the course of this arc, how Shin slowly grows and develops to where we see him going to this space against Gakue, one of Kesha's vassals. And how he just cuts down Gakue with a single swing. And how his body goes like skyrocketing to the other. That that was nuts. That that blew my mind, man. Towards the very end. Where he's literally on death's door. And he is fighting blow for blow with Hoken. And we see the glaive skills. How we see like multiple after images of his glaive. Of Oki's glaive. And then you see Hoken matching. It, 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 mm. It's so good. And then, because you know what? Here's the thing too, right? In the Coalition arc, you can say that the cornerstone of this arc for Shin and Company is once again taking the dreams and the hopes, everything that drives these guys, so guys like Mangoku and Dukio, and then carrying that upon their shoulders to move forward. But in this case, Shin, Ohon, and you can argue Ohon with, like, let's say, Earl Shi in like, the uh, Way arc against the Fire Dragons, Moten as well, these guys... They're carrying the burden now of the entire country in earnest. Because this was truly a make or break situation for Quinn. You kind of forget how dire things were with Quinn until you like you reread from the very beginning. Where this is earnestly so, like an all or nothing, an all or nothing moment. Like e e either we win and we are successful and we make a huge boon and we control all of like Southern Zhao or we fail, and our mission is a complete bust. And then our military might is more than half. And then other countries not take advantage of us. So Wei, Chu, Zhao, we're gonna step on in. We're gonna step on in. But more so than all of this is the fact that because this arc is focused on the characters that mean the most to us and seeing their growth and the loss that we see as well in this arc on all fronts is truly a sight to behold. Like, it really is. Because here's the thing. Mangoku, all right, it was kind of dope, but we don't care about Mangoku. We really don't. Duke, I love the Duke, okay? But if I were to okay, but if I were to say, who I care about more? Do I care about more about Dukio or do I care more about Ohon or Moten? It's like, of course I care about more about those guys more than Duke, even though I love the Duke. He was epic. Because we've seen far more of Ohon's journey and Moten's journey compared to the Duke. We grew up reading about those guys. It is what it is. I mean, shit. Even when it comes to Yotanwa. Yotanwa, you can say, she was at the very beginning of the story. And Yotanwa views people like Heiki, like Shin, like Ten. The same for Baggio. The same for, I think his name is uh, Taiju, Taifo, the guy with the big uh, club. They view Shin and company as friends. As friends. Genuinely in earnest. Like Nakama. So, even when Yotaro has her thing and we see all the mountain tribes roll. And then we see Baggio and we see uh, her and, and so on do their thing. Escaping from the mountain wolf guys of the Ryuyu city. And then how that was all one big flank move. Where we see them climb the walls to the Ryuyu city and then take it over. And then... They completely do Shunshui Ju and so on. It's like this kind of stuff. And then how Heiki, Heiki of all people, gets the W on the Ryu Yu King. It's like this this growth 
that we see for characters that are far more in, that that mean more to us as readers than like for example the Quinn general that died because of the Han uh, yeah, because of the Han guy's poison that was epic and Conky's dope and all like Conky if yeah, we love Conky of course but that one guy even though he had like an epic death we don't care much about him per se compared to someone like you know Yotanwa it is what it is and then that same notion of carrying the weight of other folks we see with lesser guys but still important guys in the Hayashin unit in the Goku unit and in the Gakuga unit so for example we see the adjuant of the Gakuga die because of Hoken like once again Hoken's stealth mission and now the one spear guy I forgot his name um the spear guy that's on Moten's click is now going to be a front man because the adjuant's dead and then the Ajwan in the arc this before, how this guy's spearmanship is, he thinks it's on par with Ohon. But then he says, but now Ohon's like on like a different level. But still, he's a, he, he's a damn good dude. When it comes to Ohon's boys, one of them actually dies to one of the, I think they're called the, the Raifu, or the Ten Spears of Gyoun, essentially. They kill, I think his name is Kyuko. And then his older brother now is getting a lot more spotlight because Kyuko is dead. And then we see how they're stalling in earnest the Ten Spears of Gyoun as Owen has to try and deal with Gyoun. And we see that and how that plays out very nicely. But of course, for the Haishin unit, I love Dukio's death. I really do. But when Chosa dies, it's one of the few times in earnest Where I genuinely was crying. Like on stream. Because. When Shin gets there. And. Shosa has like that last second. Like, like even now it's hard not to tear up. For me it really is. Because. Again you grow up with Shosa. Shosa is an awesome solid he was an awesome solid dude in earnest and seeing him go back for Kanto and the new boys that that to me was tremendous that that was a great moment like I was legit crying on stream that stream I think is actually like I think it's gone <laughs> uh, I don't have, like that yeah but that was just that was just such a dope moment, you know. Just well, not dope, but it, it was sad. It was sad, but it was written and executed really well, really, really well. I think Hard did a great job on that one. And then with Kel guy, it was just more so shock and disbelief because once again, Hoken be my name just teleports out of nowhere, like a guy that's like six foot eight in ancient China. Is somehow high like a goddamn ninja. And then like a goddamn shark fin parting the waters. It's nuts. It's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. These deaths for me were more shocking and more tragic and genuinely heart wrenching compared to let's say like the death of that one Quinn general in uh in the coalition arc. And when you have so much growth and development for Kyokai, who I think was excellent in this arc. I think she was phenomenal. Ten, who was very, very good. Moten, who shocked me. The men of Raigen. I mean, Mangoku is done. He gets... And that's one thing, too. Osen is great. But we truly see his greatness in this arc. But Riboku actually grows and develops. And it's written really, really well. It's not just about growing, per se. Because, like, growth in a lot of series is sometimes not all that great. And, like, a lot of times in the past, I put too much stake on character growth. I really did. But how it's written is actually important here. And Riboku's growth was written very, very well. Because we see how he actually learned from Dukio. And how he actually trained his men 
to have instinctual type components to their tactics, which is why Shiyu had a hard time dealing with the, some of the men with the shields. And then how things end for Riboku, how he's in the cell, and he knows what Shoikun is going to do, but word will never reach, and now he's being tried for execution. And now we have Shun Shuiju and Kocho and all these guys. They're like, yo, it's time for the regicide. We have to save Riboku because he is essentially the shining pillar of Zhao. If he goes down, then we're screwed. What? But then again, it also shows you the difference in, like, earnestly so, the difference in kings. Where you have someone like Sei, and then you have the goddamn Zhao King, who, well, we all know. We, we all know the man is a mega creep of the highest order and should be smited. Man. Man. Oh, this arc. It's, it's so good. This arc is so good through and through. Because at the end of the day, this arc is growth, is development, and is good characterization for characters that mean that mean far more to us as readers than in the past. And seeing them in earnest come to the forefront to where now you can earnestly, genuinely say, yeah, damn right, damn right. Shin, Moten, Ohon, you guys earned this general stuff. And I'm pretty sure the next chapter, when I read it, 641, that'll be the moment where we see them be generals. I I may cry. I won't guarantee that I will, but I may cry. I may just get hyped as all hell, because finally we're here. It all depends. It all depends. But no longer. Well, okay, I can't say no longer. But for the first time, I think, in earnest, we're seeing Shin and company, Shin and his peers, not just inherit the dreams and aspirations of other people but we're seeing them actually implement that utilize that in order to lead and take the burden of the entire country of quinn on their shoulders along with other generals like yotanwa like osin and we're seeing them in earnest in this arc i would argue be on their level or at least closer to their level in previous arcs, you really couldn't say that, per se. But in this arc, you could. We're seeing them actualize what they have inherited in the past. And then when it comes to still inheriting stuff, we see that even still with, again, other minor characters within these groups. Ten does that. Ten is the one that inherits the hopes and dreams, everything to it. She inherits that stuff from Kinmo. And she, in this case, becomes like Shin, in this case. Where Shin, we saw with Mongoku, he inherits the hopes and dreams of Mongoku. And then he uses that as a pushing point or like a foundation. And now Ten does the same thing with Kinmo. So Ten is now going to develop and grow in a very, I think, very productive way now in the future. Part of the reason is because of Kinmo. It is what it is. And we see Shin and Oho and Moten take the lead when they needed it the most. We see them awaken. At some point, Ten literally can't perceive what Gion is doing. It's Shin. Shin steps in there to take over for Ten. And then he actually has, to, uh, like, you know, he's actually uh, reading Gion's moves and he's trying to counter them and so on. He's a step behind, but that is tremendous growth and tremendous, like, a huge improvement from Shin two, three arcs ago. It's great. It's great. One of the things that I really wanted to see in the coaching arc was Kyokai. We never got that. Of course. And again, she had her own thing with the Shiyu tribe. Fair enough. But Kyokai in this arc, my god, man. My god, man. It, it's great. Dude, even, even Naki. We see how much of a boon Naki is for the Hayashin unit. After the Kokyo Hills, Naki's in. He's inbound. And we see how useful he is. And we see how good he is. And then when Shin died, and here's the thing too, I'm going to do a video, a sort of video on Riboku, because there's, there's so much to cover. When it comes to, not, not, not Riboku, Hogan. I'm going to do a sort of video on Hogan versus Shin, but I would argue that Hogan versus Shin is probably the best fight in Kingdom. Probably the best fight in Kingdom. 
A lot of folks say that Hogan isn't deep. That's not true at all. If you say that Hogan isn't deep, then you're, mis th then you're missing Hogan. Hogan is going over your head entirely. Entirely. Hogan is actually pretty deep. He really is. And that psychological, that philosophical element of Hogan, that spiritual, that spiritual aspect of Hogan, I think is tremendous. An example. And again, it just shows like the depth that Haru was willing to go in its arc. Riboku makes the claim, and it's true, that, as far as you know. The folks that have always gone against Hoken, his bid to the gods to show his enlightenment, have all died. Oki died. Dukio died. The Ajuan died. Uh, Moten's Ajuan died. Everyone that has always made a bid against Hoken has died. Including Shin. Shin died. If not for Kyokai, Shin would have actually have died. There is a depth to that fight that I think a lot of folks are missing out on. And again, that'll be its own separate video. This is just a video to kind of talk about, in a general sense, why I think that this arc is the best arc in Kingdom. I think it has the best fight. And it has really damn good moments, like phenomenal moments, for characters that mean more to us as readers, at least to me. Oh, again, Ohon, Moten, Shin, Karyoten, Kyokai, the list goes on and on. Reboku even. Rebo Reboku! Yotanwa. So, in the future... In the near future, like in the next, like, you know, four or five years, right? Yeah, like three years. I don't see another arc being just as good as this arc. It'll take some time. It'll take some time in earnest. Because even after the Coalition arc, the Way arc with the Fire Dragons was all right. Wasn't necessarily great, but it was all right. Kogyo Hills was pretty good, but not anywhere near Coalition. Zhao Invasion, though, my God, is it tremendous. So let's say two arcs from now, we may see another tremendous phenomenal arc. Especially if there's going to be an arc on the regicide, where we're going to see the rebellion in Zao. That could be, a, like, if it's an arc focused on Foite and Kaine and Banaji and Sunshuiju and Kocho and then Riboku, and then you have, like, the top end guys of the royal army of uh, Kantan and how that all works out and, the, you know, like, the king... And then we have the prince too. I think his name is Kai. Like how he comes in the forefront as well. Like th that could be a tremendous arc. King has so much goddamn potential, man. It is what it is. So again, this current arc, the Zavage arc, I think is the best arc in Kingdom. I have not reread the Kodosh arc, and I will at some point in like the near, hopefully this month, later this month, I should say. But for now, I'm confident. If I were you, I would reread. Take your time because it's a three-year-long arc. Take your time. Reread. The Zavage arc. Reread it. Okay? Uh, for this video, no clips, no nothing like that because I just kind of want to talk and sit down. My first Kingdom discussion video, but for the time being, just enjoy, you know, old school King of Lightning. Me, you guys, camera, it is what is there. So, I'm going to see you guys and gals in the future, right? There'll be more Kingdom talk in the future, no doubt about that. Be sure to rate the video. It is not that hard to do. I guarantee you that because I know that you all have a device called Zay Mouse Sue. You use Zay Mouse Sue to click, 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 rate the video, to click, 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 subscribe, to click on that bell, to join the squad. And of course, let me know where you stand on the subject matter at hand. If you feel like there's another arc better than these two arcs, then fine, fair enough. But when it comes to Zhao Invasion and Coalition, I would say we read both these arcs. For me, I haven't done the Coalition just yet, but I will in the future, obviously. Well, read these arcs and let me know your stance. Let me know your stance, for real. I'm going to catch you on the flip side. Be easy. Take care. And have a nice goddamn night.